This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review video for Sunday, August 21st, 2016. However, it is being filmed on Saturday the 20th, so I have not seen the futures, and there is plenty of news that can come out Sunday night that could always affect the analysis. That being said, let's jump into it. Very ambitious uh, video this week. I will be away for on vacation for most of the week. I will, however, try to do some Periscope from the beach either on, um, I don't want to commit to a day, but maybe Wednesday. And then uh, there'll probably be a weekend review video for next week. I'd be shocked if there wasn't. Uh, all right, so let's jump right in here. So I, I'm going to run through the seven market keys, talk a little bit about the macro with regard to the Fed, get into the major market indices, and then hit up some of the momentum stocks and hopefully wrap up with my ES trade that I did on Friday with the secure low play that everyone was so curious about. Uh, I will get into that. Anyhow, let's start with the VIX. Really kind of kissing the lower end of the range. We had a bit of a uh, volatility spike up, although less than the last. Uh, there's some room lower maybe here, down to like the tens, I, get, I suppose. But this is really the lower end of the range. This is pure directional play, meaning buying calls, buying puts, spreads, and, and the like. Uh, there's always room for, you know, a, a, an IV spike. I'd be kind of betting on that more than a move to the low, but it seems like we're just going to stay in the low end of range for a while. Some of this kind of stuff, I think we're going to have a lot more chop. This is probably going to be a really cl cl slow week as we get into Labor Day, and then things will kind of pick up a little bit more when people are, you know, kids are going back to school and traders are off the beach and back in the, um, I don't know, in front of their computers, their desks or so on and so forth. So VIX low end of range, pure directional play here. The dollar. So I've been talking about the UUP, it just, I don't know, it's an ETF. I know not everyone trades futures, so I figure this is an easy way to, to do it. I bracketed off a range. This, I had said, could get dangerous if we took out this swing high. We made a lower high and now a lower low. Uh, it usually moves below this 24.47 aren't all that sustainable, but it wouldn't surprise me to see a little bit move lower in the dollar. If we start breaking the trend and getting back up above the 10-day and so on and so forth, and the 100 here, the 100 MA, which was the kind of has been the support, wouldn't surprise me to see some kind of a throwback to the 100 but anything really below there in the 50, I still think it's rather tame. You can see there were some reference lows here. I do think that um, the Friday, the Jackson Hole speech, however, could be the J Yellen's Jackson Hole speech could be the uh, a, a decider. If this sells off really too aggressively into that, then I think it could be a fade to the upside. If this happens to rally aggressively into that, then it could be a fade to the downside. It might be one of those Costanza-like plays. Remember, lower dollar is good for PE multiple premiums. That would be the top number. Remember, we talk about our, I guess, addition. I, I, I should sorry, our division problem here. We have a top number, a numerator, a bottom number, a denominator, and an end product. I've talked about the top number that is involved with this. This is the dollar. This happens to do with revenues and repatriation. And then, of course, the, the lower number, the denominator, has to do with um, what's coming up next, and that is the bonds. As long as these stay high, and I think we could be in one of these kind of consolidation phases, it doesn't even have to keep rising. It just doesn't, we just don't want uh, falling out of bed action. Let me go back a little. Like, we don't want this type of action. As long as the bonds kind of stay high, you can see it did break a little bit of a trend here, more by time than by price. We're still holding on to the 50 MA and above this 138 half, albeit just a little bit. But as long as this isn't in crash mode, PE multiple premium, you know, or, um, weighted average cost of capital and discounting cash flow valuation and discounted cash flow valuation um, is is on the table. So as long as rates stay low, stocks stay high. I, we didn't even get a measured move like this had this measured move. It wouldn't surprise me if this kind of gently came down. 
As we move into the Fed, I think the Fed has been priced out of the market so badly, it's possible that there is some type of a, a move up. I'll get to that maybe now, actually. Uh, I'm going to jump into that macro stuff. This is a very apropos place for it. The Fed had their minutes. I don't care what anyone said. I actually read them myself from cover to cover, as they say, and they were rather dovish. Uh, I'll discuss some of the reasons why. If you're really interested in this, watch the opening of my Periscope. The link to that will be in the description below. But um, some of the things that I highlighted that they still haven't reached their 2% inflation target seems unlikely to me until they get a sustainable hold over that 2% that they're going to go. And also their outlook for the risks to inflation seem to be lower. A little contradictory because they seem to think oil would recover, but then talked about more oil bankruptcies. And that's, that's a little bit of a push me, pull you type of a situation, but they did see the risks being lower. They want to see if the jobs are sustainable. They want to see rate, wage growth. And they did note that the rate of change, that would be your gamma, um, is slowing. They talked about lack of business investment because of regulatory uncertainty. That will not change anytime soon, not under this administration anyway. Um, they talked about – they are worried though, and this is why they keep jawboning the markets. They are worried about the reach for yield, meaning people piling into – risky assets and pricing them, uh, you know, higher than they should be. Um, you know, if the Fed is really worried about that, though, they would be better off, in my view, raising margin requirements than interest rates, just, just saying, as they say. They seem to go out of their way to mention Italian banks. So out of all of Europe, that was the one that they discussed. So uh, yeah, stay, I guess, stay away from the Italian banks. They discussed GDP risk that they said was the risks are to the downside. I mentioned the inflation risk to the downside. And then they talk about foreign risk with risks to that being to the downside. So the Fed was a little bit gloomy in their minutes. I don't really see that being encouraging for the rate hike must happen now crew. So that's my take. Back to the, um, back to the analysis here. Anyway, TLT holding high. If there's a snap of the 50, maybe you get a move down here to the 137s, 135s. I would think that the 50% FIB here in the 135s and in the 133s, uh, you can see there's some reference. Um, this was a reference peak, and as was this. I think that area would be a good put ratio kind of play, like buying some up here and then selling two times out of the money here, at least short term. I mean, there's always risk that it makes it to the channel low and like to the 200 MA, but I think that this area to me would likely be the area of support just because that's the, um, this is really the distribution here in the 132s. You can see that there was some reference there. I, I would think in there, if, if things get really dicey, that, I mean, that's a, listen, that's a really big move. But I, I don't really think that this is going to fall out of bed too quickly. I think that rates are staying lower for longer, and that's why we're just kind of hanging out, drinking stout. Yeah. Uh, one more thing that I found encouraging, and we know that the Fed looks at this because they have said they, they look at this. The HYG, we're not in crash mode. Even when oil pulled back, HYG was hanging strong, hanging tough. And even as interest rates have been edging up minorly in TLT, HYG is really near its 52-week highs. This is really where the credit trouble kind of speaks. When I always say that there's risk of crash or really recession or pullback, you'll see it in, the, in credit spreads. And the Fed has talked about the riskier assets, meaning the higher yield corporate bonds over the risk-free rate. This is by no means in any type of scary pattern. It broke the downtrend. It's just kind of chopping. You did get a pullback. Uh, still above the 10-day. Kind of gets a little un a little sporty on this side of the this kind of unofficial regression line that I draw in, and then unsustainable to the downside. So I'm kind of just watching the um, this line and seeing where we hang out there. Anyway, the trend is higher. 50 MA has been, was support the last time. Until 50 MA and trend breaks, I will think everything is kind of quote-unquote hunky-dory in credit land. The oil. So I was one of the few people who has been saying that this wasn't going to get cray-cray to the downside. I thought the 200 MA area would hold. It had a bit of a look below and fail. 
and did it in dramatic fashion. This day in particular was one that I mentioned in real time on the stream. The oil numbers were bearish. You had an outside day, a look below and fail, closed high, and to ignore that is very dangerous. We have been in rally mode. We are getting back near these highs. I am thinking that this area will have a little bit of muscle memory and there probably will be some, I guess, some selling. But I do think that the risk for oil really is a move higher at this point to fill up into these 56s, 54s and 56s. Um, that's where I think we could be going in the, I guess, in the bigger picture. I don't want to get, you know, ahead of my ski, you know, out in front of my skis and start making some wild-eyed projections. But, I mean, in all fairness, we could be talking about a measured move. You know, you had 2605 all the way up here to 5162. And if you were going to project that $25.62 move off this low, which was 39.19, you know, you could be seeing $64.81 oil. Uh, let's go back to, let's roll that beautiful bean footage. I just get goofier and goofier with these videos. I mean, you could see we would at least see this, this high here and maybe even a little bit higher into the 64s. So it would not surprise me if you projected this up to here that we could see higher oil. Uh, I would start getting a little bit more concerned with regard to oil, if this top like stalled and then there was some kind of dramatic pullback, I think it would also start showing in Exxon. If Exxon starts breaking down, I'm gonna show you that right now. Exxon has really been sucking wind down here. Um, it, it had multiple days down, there was a gap down and it was bought up. I think it was just because there had already been so many multiple days down and this was coming from a 52 week high. I wouldn't be surprised though to see Exxon kind of come back down and see the channel low, but I don't know that that's going to happen. We're still above the reference high, the 87.44. There's a lot of reference support down in this area. Remember, 83s were a big level. First of all, 86s were a huge level. Those have been holding. These have all been kind of look below and fails with some higher highs. We are bear flagging though. I don't, I don't want to say that we're not, but if we do punch through this, I do. I see two scenarios here. One is we punch through this and we get a retest to the backside of the old up channel here up in the 92s. If we lose these lows, then they were close enough to the 84s that I'm not sure that they would hold, but 83s have a ton of reference support as do 81s. This could take a while. I would love, I've said for a while, for this to like kind of chop for a while and then come down to 81s and be at the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement and the channel low. We can't always get what we want. I, I don't know that it's gonna play out that way, but I do think that if there is some snap or ruski move in here, given that this came down a lot and coming down on another leg, that there would be some interested buying opportunity into those sort of more mid 80s. Uh, again, a move back over the 100 MA and over this high here of 89.01, I think we see the 92, very least, the 50 MA, that's really kind of where this um, this has been kind of more the support, but I think we would see the, uh, the 92s. So that's the way I will be playing it. If we get the snap, I would probably try a right or right out short or more likely a put ratio, you know, buying these puts and selling them two times out of the money there. If we break out up here, a simple call spread can do it or if you wanna try it long with equity, I don't think you're gonna get yourself um, too beaten up in Exxon. XLE still looking good. I mean, look at this. Uh, other than um, Friday, which was an inside day, I mean, we're basically at 52-week uh, highs here. So, not nothing too concerning in uh, in that area. Other than Exxon is um, not, you know, kind of showing me the money the last couple of weeks. Um, I don't have a position anymore in Exxon. I talked about taking it off at the highs. It happened to be very fortunate. Uh, 72s is where I think we could see that we had had an, a trend line that kind of broke. The back side of that is 72s. That's also this reference area. Uh, it seems to me where we might be going with XLE. Yeah. China. Gotta have your China. Uh, looking 
fine, uh, just kind of chopping and grinding uh, into some reference area, into, look, this reference distribution. Doesn't surprise me that we're getting a little bit of uh, stall action. I wouldn't be surprised to see some type of a rollback to the trend line, but this seems like it's trying to grind higher to the uh, to the channel high if I kind of had to say. Um, if we lose the uh, trend, then, you know, all bets kind of are off at that point. Baba blew out their numbers. They had quite an impressive earnings number. It had already been up a lot, and it's just kind of chopping here. I, I've done some measured move type action. I measured this one, which was $37. That would have taken to take this move up to 110. Um, I did this one, which was 29, 22. I did this one, which was 26, 62, and I projected those here, and then I did a geometric mean of all three of them. So, and I projected a 1.618 Fibonacci extension, which would be 103s. I would be, so here's the dilemma. Here's my conundrum. One, we're in a bit of a channel and we are right at the channel high. So we could fail and pull back here. The other scenario, if you kind of ignore the channel for a moment, is that you had this big move up. You basically held exactly where you needed to hold, and it's just kind of chopping around a few days of consolidation. If there's a move back through the highs here, uh, 90, 9886, after multiple days of consolidation, I think we would at least see these uh, challenge, I should say challenge these upper upper levels here. Um, it doesn't surprise me that we, you know, we had the gap fill, we're near the channel high. It doesn't surprise me that there's some chop. I think you can play it long if you're really short term with a basically a 95 stop back below there to me would get a little more iffy. You'd probably at the very least get a 10 day moving average test, which really isn't that big of a deal. But, you know, this could back off a little bit more and maybe test the lower end of the gap. I don't know that we're going to fill it, but I do think it's possible that you might see the 91s. Um, like I said, their earnings were really phenomenal and the stock really does deserve to be higher. But um, as Clint Eastwood has told us, deserve ain't got nothing to do with it. IBB, I said to be a little wary of this breakout. We're basically holding it, which is good. It is not as overbought as it had been. Stochastics are rolling over a bit, as are the money flow, as are the you know the higher highs and higher lows. Um, the 200 MA here to me is what's going to matter. If we can kind of stay above there, I think that this can see the 315s. If this rolls back through here, I think that there'll be buyers on the 50 MA is my guess. Again, another kind of put ratio play or a move back through these highs I think could extend up and beyond. A couple of things that are looking a little interesting to me is this Gilead first and foremost. So this has just been a total disappointment on all fronts, right? You had this um, big run up, filled this gap, Gap down, spent some time in the wilderness, kind of tried to rally, gap down again, basically humming around these lows. Uh, one thing I want to note is that look the moving average that we broke on the last gap. That's the 10-day moving average. Look at the average we kind of just took. As long as Gilead holds over the 10-day, I think you can try right or right out long for a move up to challenge the gap, which would be at 84s. Um, somewhere between this 50 MA and this downtrend line, which is roughly around there, I think could be a, a play if you want to use a play against the 10 day. Anything back below there, if it comes back down here again so quickly, I, I think that this could get a, um, a final flush, this, um, this Gile Gilead. Anyway, that's my, uh, my thoughts on the Gilead. Um, Alkermes is one that I've been talking about there being a pullback. It is breaking the channel here a bit. The 100 MA is really the key. Uh, if you measure this $8.25, this is roughly about the um, same pullback level. Um, I did a few, six and change, 8.25. So this area should kind of support it. If it can support and then get back up over the 50 MA, then I think it's kind of correct. It's okay. But anything still below the 200 MA to me is still a little bit iffy and vulnerable for a move maybe back even down to um, the 39s or 40s. But this to me, I, I like the idea of a right or right out against the, uh, of the 100 MA for a quick uh, try, given the fact that this has basically come down in a straight line. 
So that was Alchemy's. Um, okay, let's get into Spy, the big bad old Spy. So the expected move this week is, um, I would think up, it would be probably roughly about this, $2.23. It's really $2.22.6, 2.226. That would take you roughly up to two twenty seventy seven, which is roughly my 1.618 Fibonacci extension from the pre-Brexit high to the Brexit low, projected higher. Um, if we were to pull back and it was the exact measured move uh, or the expected market maker move, that would be the 216.31, uh, so roughly around this uh, this gap fill. I don't know that that would necessarily hold it either. Um, I want to talk about a, a couple of areas that I'm seeing here as being important. One is that all of these highs roughly in here, I mean, look at this. It just feels, this was a lot of consolidation. Everyone's talking about how overbought the market is. It's really not as overbought as everyone, I think, thinks. I mean, look, the 10-day is right here. The 20-day is here. I mean, yeah, the 50 is a little bit low. I mean, considerably lower in the 213s. But, I mean, look at how far this has come up since the the Brexit. I mean, all of the major averages are basically just kind of in trend mode back higher. I think that it seems to me that these highs are a little bit poor. I want to go into, uh, let me get into a little bit, yeah, that's why, nine-month daily. All right, so a few things to note. And the screen is frozen. Why doesn't that surprise me? Give it a sec. Anyway, uh, yeah, here we go. All right, so a, a couple of things to note here. One is that you had this kind of island reversal excess type of bar. The only issue I have with it, first of all, the, the highs on this day were super de duper poor. You had a gap down, which should have signaled the the kind of the end of this move, but y you didn't. I mean, you, you basically had this kind of look below and fail, and we're back right up. And you have more hammers here with a higher low. Um, if we were to lose this low here, this um, two six two seventeen oh two, then I think things could maybe get a little bit more dicey short term, just because you'd have be you'd basically be below all of these lows. Like this was 217.02, the low here was 217.07. So you'd have taken back all of this this range. And I think you might want to, uh, this might want to see a little bit low. I think the gap fill immediately and then maybe would want to see the 50 MA. If this punches back up through here, you know, over these few day highs, then I think you get the extension up higher. A couple of things to caveat. One about this kind of island ish reversal. Look at the low of day there. It was 218.88. The high here was 218.90. So we've already kind of looked into that range a smidge. Yeah, I guess you can say it kind of rejected a, a bit. And you could make the argument that this entire day is excess. But what kind of excess are you talking about? It's like incrementally higher. This isn't like we had a, um, you know, like a gap up here and then the next day, gap down and was a gap and go lower. This is just, to me, like a look above and fail. Those can lead to larger liquidation breaks. It hasn't so far. This, to me, does not seem like a good, quote unquote, good high, a real true um, excess high. So that's just my, my take on it. Um, that being said, we did break kind of trend a little bit here, more, more by time than by price. We're holding the 10-day. We're holding the 20-day. I would think that we will see the 1.618. I just don't know that we don't list a little lower first. We'll we'll have to see into those 216s and maybe maybe beyond. We'll have to we'll have to see how it plays. So I would think that if there is a move higher, we're, we'll we would see that 1.618. I mean, listen, it's also possible that this just really gets the finally after at long last gets the blow off. And you get to see the uh, the channel high. I just keep kind of inching this thing higher, as every week I kind of just w show you where the where the channel high would be. So let's leave it here. I think that would be good for this week. It's very possible that this does get a you know a blow off move to the channel high. So a lot of consolidation here. Again, a lot of consolidation here. I think that is really just working off a lot of this excess move. 
And it just seems to me like at the very least that the they would want to try and take it higher. It just seems every day is these you know liquidation breaks. You get these poor highs, liquidation break, poor high, liquidation break, and it just gets bought back up really quickly. Again, the dog days of summer. This might be one of those just don't short a dull market type of a situations. That being said, I'm going to just reiterate it again. If we get below the 217.02, it's a right or right out short. If we get above the 119 half, it's a right or right out long. I'm going to just keep it that simple. IW, oh, uh, before we go into IWM, a couple of things that I um, see that are a little bit dis disturbing but could set up for short term plays. One is this McDonald's, very clear head and shoulders top. Let me go back. It's a big one, though, so it's a little harder to play. So if you project this move down here, that's $15.88. If you project this move down, it is to this range low to the tick. Given how far this came, remember how I always talk about coming up from the bottom? Now this is coming down from the top. I think somewhere between this channel low and the 212.71 should be some interesting support. So I'm looking for a right or right out trade in McDonald's. The IV in there is super low, so I probably just buy a call spread. So if I'm wrong, it's not going to be very expensive. That being said, this was really day one of the range break. The two ways to play this, in my view, with McDonald's is one is a right or right out trade down here in the two, 112s or 113s, or if this were to be like a gap up Monday over Friday's high, because this here now would have been a look below and fail. And anything, in my view, back up over 116.80 would be a trend line snap above the look below and fail and would likely extend up into the um, retest the um, 200 and the 50 MA, at, at maybe at the very least. And if this really becomes a runner, could test even up to the 124s. So that's the way I'm looking to buy it, either a little lower or back up over Friday's high. Deer, um, professional gap. You know how I talk about, remember I talked about the 10-day in Gilead? Look, where the broke breakdown took place was the 200 MA. Now this was a gap and go over the 200 MA. This filled up this triangle really quickly. The problem is, is this has moved so far so fast. It's, um, by the way, this is now the second test of the 61.8, so I don't think that that's as, as, as relevant. It, it seems to me that this is going to fill this gap up to 90.65. Um, I would be a buyer for right or right out if this were to have some kind of a pullback somewhere between the 93s and 94s, roughly halfway in the bar and where these um, resist these these kind of resistance bars were up in here. Um, yeah, so a pullback to here I think is a good right or right out long. The ideal scenario would be if this had like two th like three four days of pullback and then another bar straight up. Listen, that's maybe trying to thread the needle a little bit too um, too closely, but I would be I, it would be rare to me to see this pattern completely fall apart given the power of it. Right off trend, gap and go over basically gap to or go and over the 200 MA over the downtrend and just total beast mode. So I'm thinking gap fill, and I'm looking to buy this on some kind of a pullback into the 84s or 83s for a right or right out long trade. IWM. This is just chopping around. I basically I said as long as we're over 120.58, I think that the play is likely to the upside. If you lose that, then there could be a pullback to the famous 117.37. Those of you who have been following me for a while know, know what we're talking about with those levels there. Um, that being said, 20MA has been what's held it. As long as the 20 MA holds, I think it's a grind higher. If it snaps, 50 MA, and this area um, would be the first targets, assuming this area doesn't hold. Q's just coasting, amazing. Uh, Apple had been strong and let it up, and you've you've seen a little bit of weakness in Fang. You know, I'm a little superstitious when there are these spike levels. I think the mach machines cash them and want to retest them. Basically, riding the 10-day MA, anything over 115.75 to me remains bullish. There's a gap fill roughly around 115.67. So I think between 115.67 and 115.75, as long as that holds, it's okay. Below would get a little bit more iffy. Um, yeah, that's my view. If you do a 1.618 Fibonacci projection from, I think, this range, that would be 124.51. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, one thing I also like about this is that you're over this box 
and over these highs. That to me doesn't, I mean, as long as those areas hold, it, it's kind of all right. Apple, um, Apple just loves to make things difficult sometimes, um, but it is very technical and it responds very well to technicals. Um, I have way too many alerts in here, can you tell? I can probably get rid of those, I don't really need them. Um, 109.85 to 110, this got 110.23 and has backed off. Um, it's interesting to me that the back off has been rather mild, which is, I guess, kind of encouraging. I've been watching Apple the last few days trade. I, I kind of know the personality of the stock. There's these intraday moves, and it seems to me like there's probably some kind of a big seller up here that's just sitting on the stock roughly in these 109s and 110s, um, given how much this has come up. There's a little bit more room. I think that this could see the 111.27 to 111. That was like the flash crash lows from way back in the day. So I'm thinking there might be a little bit more up room here. But um, if you were to lose these lows here, the 108.34s, or if you want to be a little 107.78, uh, then I think we could see the 20 MA and this gap fill here to um, 105.87. So you want to kind of be a little bit careful if you start losing these 107, I would say the 107.78 at the very least, and maybe these two-day lows and the 10-day MA. So we'll see how Apple plays. I just think that, I think that this is going to rally into the iPhone launch, but I don't know that it's not going to pull back a little bit first given the, the run it's had into the gap fill. Um, we'll see how that plays out. So that's my thinking. It's a good area to book a little bit of profits if you've been long for a while. I, I've discussed that. Microsoft, um, holy boy, this is, the, um, holy cow. The old dot-com high is 59.97. That's where I think we're going. Um, again, remember what I talk about coming up from the bottom? It's consolidating, which is good. Uh, as long as it holds over this 56.85, I think it's kind of okay. If it breaks there, it might want to retest the 55s. And if it gets extreme, the 53s back to the mid-end of range. But I do think that longer term that this high here is going to be tested at the very least. Facebook, um, listen, this is doing exactly what it always does, runs up, pulls back, or does one of these and chop and consolidate and then freaks out and test the trend. Um, I think that's what's happening here. I really don't see anything different happening. Their earnings were fantastic. It just had run a lot into the number. We got above the um, the progression line. We got both 1.618 Fibonacci extensions, and really up here to the um, this this channel. I mean, this line high. Uh, I, I think that at, at the worst, my thinking is that this will likely see the 120.79, and maybe it could even see the 61.8, which is the oddly the trend touch area. So would not surprise me to see some kind of a little kind of shake and bake where it shakes people out to this area. Um, if you get back over this high, though, however, the 126.09, then I think we retest the old all-time highs and then likely retest into the 130s where it kind of topped out after hours. So, um, yeah, I, I like the idea of just selling out of the money premium in Facebook right here, uh, either both puts and or calls. I think it's just going to be kind of dead money for a little while until it, you know, kind of does its chop fest, which can take, as you see, quite some time. I mean, this took weeks and weeks, and that's what's going on here. Really uh, very typical price action for the Facebook. Amazon just kind of, it broke the channel and just kind of listing around again more by time than by price. Seasonally, this has not been like the best time of year for Amazon. You did have these two dojis and it broke a little on Friday. Maybe this has a little bit of room down to the one, th one. I mean, sorry, 731 half. I mean, we'll have to see. I do think longer term, this is going to see the 1.618 Fibonacci extension up at 833.91, but I don't know that it's not going to come back and retest, you know, this kind of pullback line and the um, and the breakout area first. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, it was Amazon. Netflix has been perking up a little bit. I know that there was, I think, some insider buying. There's been some takeout rumors. I, I don't know or think that those are true. I like that it's over the 100 MA. It's kind of breaking trend a little bit, but 
This got close enough to the gap fill that I don't know that the gap fill would really fully stop it. I do think the 200 MA would be an area for selling. Look where the gap down took place. Uh, this 200 MA, anytime we've gotten close, has been some grim death. It's also roughly around 101, which is an, a significant level. But um, yeah, I mean, as long as this holds the 100, I mean, I've, I've said this, as long as it holds a 92, 93 area and the 50 MA is right in there, if you want to sell some out of the money premium, you know, maybe around like the, these lows where the gap fell was around 87s or 85s, I, I think it, I think it's just going to be chopping in a range, but starting to look maybe a little bit better now that the downtrend line is broken and it's, you know, consolidating fairly decently. It's shown a little bit of relative strength to its FANG cohort. Google, uh, again, came up from the bottom, got the high. It's getting some responsive selling. Um, I'm looking to sell some puts in here somewhere between the 780 and the 765.84. Um, I do think that Google is eventually going to see this channel high. I just don't know when, if it has to pull back first and then go. But look, there's all this confluence of moving averages down here near the 750s. That's the 100, the 200, and the 50 MA. So if you get into like the 780s and the 765s, I'd probably be looking to sell puts at the 750 or below strike because I do think that this area would hold it. Um, if Google now consolidates for a few day more days and then takes out the 813.88, then I think it's just gonna, it's just gonna go. But um, so there's two plays. One is the momentum play right over the high, or two is on the pullback into this region. And that's, that's really the only way I see to play it. Tesla just chopping. This has been rather frustrating. I talked about rolling the call spread. I've done that. I've sold some out of the money so puts to kind of finance it. Uh, the stochastics are rolling over a little bit. The stock isn't doing all that much. It's just kind of listing. It's still above the 50 MA. Um, we saw in after hours the dump that it stopped at 216, um, and that's been the 200 MA. So I think as long as it is over the 200 MA, it's probably quote unquote okay. I think shorts are sticking in here, hanging in here because they know Elon Musk talked about raising uh, capital to fund the Solar City by and their and their cash needs. The bears are always excited about these ca these capital raises. They always tend to be smaller than expected, and he buys into them, and they always wind up being buying opportunities. So I don't really know how much downside this stock has, although the upside might be limited as well. Um, I'm still in those call spreads. They really aren't very expensive to me at this point. I had talked about how I um, sold premium to finance it a while back and you know so on and so forth so this is kind of just a i wouldn't say a free call but a cheap call for a play to the upside i i would think that this could see the uh, 240s and the maybe even the 265s eventually if this squeeze really starts going it's building up a lot of pressure my i, I just think that they they doubled their loss than what was had been expected and when stocks can't go down on bad news i tend to think they go higher this is really just doing nothing, so we'll see how that goes. I know that the short interest is very high, and that might just, you know, continue to go. I mean, when you have a stock with 30% short interest, I just don't see how long that can that can last. Chipotle. Um, all right, so this isn't a stock I like to trade or cover all that often. Their options tend to have wide spreads. This got back up to this reference area on a really junky um Number, a lot of people, I, I was sort of surprised it rallied on this, but I, I said maybe at long last, maybe they try to um, get the low in. It couldn't hold the 100 MA, and it's just been pulling back. So you're coming down from a very high area down into a reference low. So my thoughts are these, is um, this has come down now so a lot, and these lows, if I were the machines, I'm not, but I would think that these lows are poor and that they probably want to get run at the very least. There's an old gap fill around the 376.75, and I really would love, frankly, a move down to the 61.8 around the 312. I don't know if that's going to happen this time, but I do think that this will likely be a right or right out short here. I would... I'm not necessarily looking to be short here, to initiate shorts here, but I'd probably be looking to sell some out-of-the-money puts if you can get some kind of volume extension down to the downside, just because this has come down so far so fast. So I'm looking to be an out-of-the-money put seller on the break when everyone's panicking and puking out after a couple of days, maybe some very near-dated um, out-of-the-money puts, you know, maybe same week if this you know has some kind of a big plunge. 
But the stock, as long as it's below the 50 MA here, day here to me, it seems like trouble. If you could somehow miraculously get a rally back up through the 50 and through this 405.26, then I think the squeeze is on to at least the hundo. 100 MA, that is. Twilio. Um, this played out exactly. Actually, I had really was quite prescient with Twilio and with ACIA. I'll talk about both of them. Um, I said in Twilio, I thought we would double the range in the last weekend's review video. It got slightly above there and then just completely pulled back. Um, it seems to me these eggs are cooked. Um, there might be some kind of a rally from here. The 10 day to me is really, um, the key that has been, see, you could see other than some, a couple of days it's spent below here has been the support. Um, yeah, so write or write out if you want on the 10 day. If not, I think that a move back down to the breakout area and to the trend would likely for at the very least day trade be a write or write out bounce play. So I'm kind of waiting here with my catcher's mitt to try a write or write out trade on trend. I don't know that we would get back up this high. Maybe we do, but I would be thinking at the very least a bounce to a lower high. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of just, uh, waiting with my bat on my shoulders, the 10 day to me, I'm really not all that interested, but, um, down here on the trend, I, I would be Twilio, listen, could go higher or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I tend to not, I like to, um, not look back. You know, you get you sometimes when you look back, you turn to stone, but 50% <laughs> fib to 61, eight, somewhere in this area, I think will be a, uh, will be an area to, to, to buy Twilio. Or if you're short to very at the very least cover, although I don't think that's an easy stock to borrow. I'm not shorted. I don't think many people are. Uh, last weekend in the weekend review, I said I thought ACIA got 125. Go back and look if you don't believe me. We missed it by 10 cents, so I guess I'm a total villain. Um, again, I, I this did what it, I thought it was supposed to do. I don't really want to uh, you know look back. If this somehow pulls back. It, it probably won't, but if it's were to get a gap fill, then the gap fill area would, you know, somewhere between the 50 and the 61.8 and the gap fill, I think this area would be a buy. It probably won't do that. My guess is this is just going to chop and consolidate for a while, given the move it's had. But um, yeah, for me, that trade is uh, is kind of on the, the done list. Um, Ulta, getting a lot of talk. I had been bullish on this stock a while back. I had made some good money on it. it this thing is just a complete monster. Um, I'm guessing it's going to see the channel high up near the uh, 287s, uh, 288s. Um, 50 MA, I, I, listen, I'm not in the stock now, but I would think the 50 MA here, given the fact that it's near the channel low, somewhere between the channel low and the 50 MA is probably a, a, a right or right out buy if this happens to pull back at least, like I said, for a intraday day trade. So I'm kind of just keeping my radar up for that with um, with Ulta. Uh, BMY, I'm going to talk about Bristol Myers. I actually put a little bit of a long on down here on the on the actually on the near the dead low. Um, it had a bit of a bounce that kind of gave back a lot, and then again, you really need to get back up over the high of day here. This 59. 52 to confirm that the low is in. I think that this is going to bounce and at least get somewhere up into here, the retest the backside of the old uptrend. I'll show you what I was seeing. Um, actually, we need three day, five minute. I want to show you what I was seeing on the lows um, back here. Wait, where were we? Um, yeah, so back in here, I, I, I tweeted it out in, in real time. I said I thought the sellers were looking exhausted, and I'll show you why. Look at this marginally lower low back to the upside another one here hammer hammer um here trying to look a little bit and buyers again here marginally lower back to the upside and then this exploded higher the next day so my thinking is that this this is a poor low there's really not tons of excess here um it's i mean it's not super duper poor but it, i mean because you do have a couple of ticks but there's no real elongation but it seems to me that this was just sellers were getting exhausted and they weren't getting rewarded for pushing it lower and that's why we got the move back higher i still have a little bit of long on in this in this and looking to uh to maybe add over that high of day since i have such great trade location um all right so i want to end on the 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 uh what was this? the secure low play i talked about on on friday 
So a couple of things to note here. One is, that why, why did I think that this was a viable low for the secure low, which wound up being the low of day? Well, for a few reasons. One was that we were coming down off of a liquidation break. Can this go back? Yeah, these were poor highs. I mentioned them. The breadth wasn't that impressive. It was at some reference re resistance area. You had overnight inventory that was predominantly net short down in here. So you already have everyone kind of loaded up short. We knew there was a liquidation break. You had this move down, this big move down, followed with a hammer, followed by another move down with a hammer, and then opened up roughly around where this um, low was. Now, take a look down here in the ticks. I talked about this on real time, in real time on the, on, on the stream. If you want to go back, if you don't believe me, go back and look at my Twitter. I, this was discussed in real time. I said that we had a, a potential secure low set up here. And I talked about where the initial buy was, the stop, and then where to add, which was up over this high. So let's discuss the, the, the intricacies here. You had the ticks making a low. You had the ticks now making a higher low here, but the market made a, a lower low. Following tick, still higher low. So I was thinking that uh, the definition of a secure low and this is the opposite, of course, is the truth for a secure high, is a low with excess bookended by two higher lows. So that was the pure play. And then the add point was up over this bar. The high of the day, I mean, the high of that bar was um, 21.7575. Um, I talked about value area low and the um, point of control being the first points of to sell and to use this pullback low as a stop. I was not surprised to see um, this liquidation break here, particularly after you had this move up and then this next bar coming down basically to that low. Anything violation of this hammer, of course, got the washout. Um, I also talked about on the stream on a second trade that a move up over this high, this um, 2179 half to me would be a long again. I didn't want to even be long again until it was up over here, although I had the suspicion that we would probably have a liquidation. I actually was talking with someone on DM, and I said that I, I thought at some point there would be a move back down to the, um, at, the at the least, of the, um, v, the VWAP, which is the volume weighted average price, and that that would be an intraday buy. And you can see that once we got back up over it, it really was where it took off. Um, a couple of things to note. This is an inverse head and shoulders here. And you have a still have a poor high on the on the day here. There's really was no excess. It would not surprise me to see this repair even still higher. Um, that's just my view on it. So uh, the things to look at again on a poor low is to see if the ticks are confirming. If this tick here was lower than this one, I would have been a little bit more iffy with the secure low setup. But the fact that the market made a new low with a higher tick, and then the following bar had a still higher low tick. It gave me the confidence to think that we were going to go back up. And I love when trades work right away. We didn't wait long at all. And it wound up being the low of day. Um, the inverse would be the same for the um, for a poor high setup. I'm, I'm sorry, a secure high setup. Just reverse this. You'd have a high with a higher high bookended by a, higher, a lower high. And then you would um, assume that you'd be looking for a situation here where the, um, the tick here would have made a high and then the, this bar, the, the second, um, you know, the, the secure part would have made a lower high and then the following one is still lower high and then the short would be below, you know, just reverse this, below the, uh, sorry, the add on that on the short or if you want to be really cautious, some people, I tend to be a little bit ballsier. I, I take the, um, I, I like to get in right away and I use this kind of like two ticks below this low as my stop. Here was just one tick, so it wound up being okay. And then I usually, like I said, use the add on over the actual, or in this instance, the one I'm discussing would be below this. In this instance here, it was above this bar. In the secure high play, it would have been below the low of that bar. And then, you know, you, you do the add on the opposite. Anyway, I hope that uh, made sense. If you have any questions, please leave comments. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. I always appreciate a little bit of encouragement and some love. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button. You'll get notifications when I post new weekend review videos, Periscope rebroadcasts, as well as special edition videos. I haven't done that many in a while, but I will be um, doing some soon. Anyway, um, 
Hope everyone has a great rest of their weekend. Enjoy the video a little bit earlier than usual. And um, I will see you guys from the beach midweek. Cheers.